and welcome to this Photoshop video tutorial. Today we're looking at how to rotate elements around a rectangle. I've done a class on doing this around a square or circular clock face, but today we're going to look at doing the same sort of thing for a rectangle because it's a little bit different. Now before I start the video, let me tell you where you can find additional Photoshop training. I have hundreds of classes at Skillshare and there's a coupon for you in the description below which includes an offer at least as good as the current Skillshare offer and typically mine is much better. Sign up for Skillshare and you get access to thousands of classes there including over 200 of mine covering Photoshop, Illustrator, Lightroom and Procreate. So let's swing back to Photoshop. I'm going to create a brand new document. Now it's pretty important that you know how big your document is going to be because we're going to base the rectangular rotation on this. So I'm going to make a document that's 800 pixels by 500 pixels. Just make a rectangle but make sure that it's nice and even sort of numbers because you might need to do a bit of math here. 800 by 500 is the size I'm using. So we're going to rotate elements around to make a clock face that is sort of relevant to a rectangular shape. Now it might help you before we start with this to have a look and see what the results are going to look like. So I have the results of a Google search on the screen here now and you'll see that when you rotate things around a rectangle things happen that might be a little bit unexpected. For example the distance between 6 and 7 is really close but between 7 and 8 is really spread apart as are 8 to 9. So just be aware that things might distort a little bit as you do that and that is because that's what this kind of rotation does. So I've got a few others of these to show you and exactly the same things happening here. And if you were to do a vertical one, well, you'll find that 8, 9 and 10 and 2, 3 and 4 are going to be all sort of squashed up. Whereas 5, 6 and 7 and 1, 12 and 11 are going to be more spread apart. So just again, be aware that this might result in things looking a little bit strange, but they're strange in exactly the right way. So for this we're going to start with finding the middle of the document. So I'll choose view and then new guide. I'm going to make a horizontal guide at 50%. So I'm just typing 5, 0 and a percentage sign. Click OK. Do the same for a vertical guide. Now you could put the exact spacing for those guides in. So you could say one at 400 and one at 250 but literally 50% just makes it really easy. And that's adaptable to any situation. Now I'm going to zoom out because I need to see quite a ways around this shape because if I draw a line, which I'm going to do with the pen tool in just a minute, if I draw the line from here to the top part of the document, when I rotate it around, it's going to rotate sort of this shape. Well, I want a rotation that's going to go all the way out here. So I'm going to have to make my starting line much bigger than the document itself. And for that, I want a shape because I don't want it to be cut off, which pixels would potentially be cut off. So what I'm going to do is make sure that I've got the pen tool selected. I've got shape selected from these options here. I'm going to click in the middle of the document. Doesn't matter if we don't get it exactly right right now. Just click once, hold the shift key, and just pull the pen tool up and just click quite a ways outside the document so that this line will swing around and easily cover the whole of the document. Press escape to stop the drawing. Now we're going to zoom in because we need to see what's happening in here. So I'm going to the path selection tool which is this black arrow tool. I'm going to select on the path and now I can make some changes to it. For a start I don't want it to have a fill and you can change elements that you've drawn using the pen tool as shapes this way. You won't be able to do it the same way for pixels and this is really why we're using a shape. So it's going to have no fill at all. I'm going to give it a stroke. It doesn't really matter what color stroke you give it. I'm going to give it black and I'm going to wind this down to 8 pixels or something that is an even number of pixels. And the reason for that is I want this to be positioned so that the middle of the line is actually right over the middle of the document. 
you're going to also want to go to the stroke options here and drop down this dialog and you want to make sure that the align option here is set to center and so that's the middle of these that means that there's four pixels of line on the left of the actual marking line here and four pixels on the right if you don't do that it's not going to rotate easily properly so the next thing we need to do is make sure that this shape is actually located in the correct position and as you can see it's not so let's go again to the path selection tool select on the path I'm going to choose edit and then transform path or free transform path it doesn't really matter what you want to do is get these options up here and the very first one that you absolutely have to select first is this one down here and it's the of these nine boxes it's the one in the middle at the bottom if you don't select that first then changes you make up here just won't be properly recalibrated if you go and then select that later it's just the way Photoshop works not the same with Illustrator but it is with Photoshop now the problem here is we want to position this in exactly the middle of the document and we can see here quite clearly that this value is incorrect it should be 400 pixels it's close enough but not close enough so I'm just going to make that 400 pixels make sure that the Y value is 250 half of my document height and this is perfect so now this shape is positioned so that the middle bottom part of it is exactly on the middle of the document that is crucial once you've got that the rest of it is fairly easy now we'll go to the layers I've got the shape layer here I'll select on it I'll choose layer new shape layer via copy and then immediately I'll choose edit and then free transform path and then we'll go back up here to these nine boxes because we already know that it's crucial that we get the rotation point set before we select anything else or it just doesn't work so we're going to the middle bottom of these nine boxes so we'll select that and if we're making a clock then the rotation is 30 degrees that's 360 which is the number of degrees in a circle divided by the 12 numbers we need around the clock if your number of elements that you want to put around this rectangle is different then just do the math on how big your angle has to be it's the only difference is going to be with the actual angle amount so I've got this now created what I'm going to do is hold down the control key the alt key and the shift key and tap the letter T for transform and we're going to do that until I get all the way around the rectangle now if you're on a Mac it's going to be command option shift and then T for transform and every time you hit the T key while you're holding down command option shift or control alt shift if you're working on a PC every time you hit the letter T you're going to get one copy and rotation now all of these shapes have gone on the same layer sometimes that doesn't happen sometimes they all go on different layers it doesn't matter it's just fine they can go wherever they like so as long as you've got the rotation that you want so now I'm going to select the 11 copies and also the one original so I've got everything selected right click over here and I'll choose merge shapes because that just gives me one layer with all of the rotations on it I'm going to zoom in at this point we can double check and make sure that the rotations look good and they are they're just fine we're going to make a guide for putting the numbers around so I'll go to the rectangle tool I'll click once in the document and I need to set a rectangle shape now the rectangle that I want is one that's going to mark out an even spacing inside this larger rectangle so my larger rectangle is 800 by 500 I'd like to come in about 60 pixels all the way around so there's going to be 60 pixels coming in on this side and 60 on this side which is 120 in total so if I say 800 less 120 that's 680 so it needs to be 680 pixels wide I want to do exactly the same on the height it was 500 I want to subtract 120 from it that means I'm left with 380 so this is the height and width of the rectangle that I want so I'm just going to click on that now this is the rectangle up here let's just go and fill it with a color and let's remove the stroke 
Now I want to position it exactly over the top of this document and center it. So I'm going here to the align option. So I'll just click on those and I'll make sure that the align to reads canvas. There are two options here, selection and canvas. We want to center this on the canvas. So with canvas selected, I'm going to click here on horizontal align center and align vertical. And so now we're coming in 60 pixels from the edge of the document. I'm going to the LAS palette. I'm just going to locate this rectangle just to dial down the opacity of it so I can still see it, but so it's not as obvious as it was. So let me just select another tool so we can see where we're going. The next thing is to put our numbers in. So I'm going to the type tool. I'm going to click approximately where the number 12 is going. I'm going to type the number 12. I'm going to make it a color of my choice. Now, if you wanted this to be black, then I suggest that you just alter the opacity of the lines underneath, just so it's easier to see everything. I'm happy with mine being red. So I'm going to zoom in here and go to the Move tool. I'm going to position my numbers just over the edge here. Now, it will help if I make sure that the number is centered in this box, which it is. So what I would do is select the number here and make sure that I have center selected. Because I'm going to copy this and rotate it all the way around. Well, I'm going to copy it and move it all the way around. And it's just going to line up much neater if we have it centered. So there's my number 12 in position. To move my artboard around, all I'm doing is holding down the space bar. And if I grab hold of the artboard, I can then move it for as long as I have the space bar held down. As soon as I let go of the space bar, then the movement stops. I'm going to the Move tool. I'm going to hover over this number and hold down on the PC the Alt key. On the Mac, that would be the Option key. And I'm going to keep it held down as I drag the number 12 away. And I'm going to place it so it's nicely lined up with the previous number 12. I'll hit the T for type tool here. I'll delete the number 2 because I just want number 1. And the 1 is now automatically centered. That's why we went to the trouble of centering the 12. Because every time we remove or add a digit, the entire shape or text object here is going to be centered. Just makes life a little bit easier. Back to the Move tool. Hold down the Alter Option key. Make sure that you get these two little arrows. There should be a black arrow in front and a white arrow behind. And that's telling you that you have got the Copy tool. Go and select this text object. Type the number 2. Hit the check mark here. Then we'll go and do exactly the same. And I'm going all the way around the shape, just trying to make sure that I'm placing everything in the same position all the way around the shape. Now you can see that number two didn't come with me. So I'm just going to let go of that, undo it with Control or Command Z. I'm going to reselect the shape with the Alt or Option key and just make sure that it actually is coming with me. Line it up nicely here, let go. T for the Type tool, hit the number 3 to replace the digit. Hit the check mark here. If I need to, I can move this a little bit, maybe into a slightly better position. And we're back doing the next one. When you're done with getting the numbers around, you're probably going to be just fine with the numbers 5, 6 and 7 and 3 and 9 and also 1, 12 and 11. What you might have a bit of difficulty with is working out exactly where you're going to put 10, 2, 4 and 8. And it really depends. Some people will do something like this where they bring them slightly in along the line so that they're actually inset. Making a sort of oval, if you like, you probably would want to try and make sure that 4 and 8 were lined up and 4 and 2 were lined up. So just sort of be careful that you've got these things lined up nicely. So what I would do is get sort of one of them in position like 10, go and select 8. 
select the align horizontal center but you're going to first of all have to make sure that these are aligned to selection not aligned to canvas so let's just go and center those and then come here and do something with the number two go and grab the number four and make sure that these two are in alignment with each other and then you'll go and grab ten and two and make sure that they're vertically aligned so this is their option to align their vertical centers and then you do the same here with eight and four that is if you're wanting this sort of slightly very slightly rounded look if you don't want that then just move these numbers out further so that they're outside the box so that they fit with the sort of shape that you've created it really is up to you exactly what you want to do with those edge numbers and you will find if you look up rectangular clocks online that there are a couple of choices that some people will line them up very boxy and some people will line them up in a very very slight sort of rounded rectangle if you like now I've just decreased the opacity on that shape layer so that we can see things more clearly now if you wanted to get rid of these lines so far as they intersect the numbers this is what we can do I'm going to make a copy of the rectangle just in case I need the original I'll just hide it I'm going to right click the duplicate and I'm going to rasterize it I'm also going to resize it now in Photoshop the most recent versions you're just going to hold down the alt or option key and drag in in earlier versions if it doesn't scale properly you're going to need to add the shift key Adobe just changed the behavior of resizing shapes in the most recent version of Photoshop it used to be that you had to hold down the shift key now you don't so don't get bitten by that change just see if it's resizing in proportion if it is you don't need to add the shift key I'm going to click the check mark here now what I'm going to do is go to the magic wand tool make sure I'm on this layer and I'm going to select the area that is outside of this square shape so you can see I'm selecting all the way around the edge here I'm going to come back in here to our shape layer that's got all these lines on it I'm going to right click that layer and rasterize it that turns it from a shape into just pixels it also means that now that I've got that layer selected and I've got my selection if I press delete I'm just going to remove the line so far as they are outside the area that's basically going to be our clock now at this stage I can turn off that rectangle copy and I can also just get rid of my guides so I'll go to view and then clear guides if I choose select deselect that would of course be control or command D you can see that now we've now got our numbers evenly spaced around what would be a rectangular clock face but of course you can create this same effect with a different number of numbers or a different number of objects whatever it is that you need to do I hope that you've enjoyed this video I hope that you've learned things about Photoshop of which you were previously unaware if you did enjoy the video please give it a thumbs up hit the subscribe button click that notification bell so that you'll be alerted when new videos are released and until next time my name is Helen Bradley thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel